Welcome to the Surf and River Report. I'm Dr. Andrea Neal, the President and Founder of Blue Ocean Sciences. Tonight we're speaking with Michael Sheehy from Channel Keeper and we want to talk a little bit about marine protected areas. Mike, could you introduce a little bit about your organization? Sure, yeah. I'm Michael Sheehy. I'm the Director of the Marine Programs at Santa Barbara Channel Keeper. And our mission is to protect and restore the Santa Barbara Channel and its watersheds. So those are all the rivers and streams from Ventura River wa watershed all the way up to Point Conception that flow into the channel. So we're hearing a lot in the news about marine protected areas. Could you explain what a marine protected area is? Sure, I'd be happy to. Marine protected area really is a discrete part of the ocean and our coast that we set aside that we don't allow any exploitation out of. They do tons for the biological communities that live in the ocean there that's being protected. So MPAs really do allow these areas to go unexploited, allowing that biology to grow and restore and actually regain again that ecological integrity, we call it. So mm -hmm. really the interaction between the animals and the plants and, and allow the area to, to grow and prosper again as it once did before we started to take from it. In the long run, means a lot. We will get more fish on our dinner plate from MPAs. The idea being that within these protected areas, mm -hmm. we get more fish, we get more biomass, and that productivity actually spills over into areas that we fish. So while you might not be able to fish in an MPA, the areas surrounding an MPA will actually see larger amounts of fish, and therefore we'll see more fish on our plates. Extremely fortunate to have MPAs in California. We have them on our coast, but the ones we have on our coast were set up um, for very different reasons than the ones that we have out at the Channel Islands. The ones at the Channel Islands were set up really with the idea of drawing on the concepts of allowing biology to restore itself. Mm -hmm. So we have a great array of MPAs at the Channel Islands, at all of them, and they make up only about 20% of the water mass around the Channel Islands, yet they are sh showing huge signs of productivity already, only after five years of being implemented. So as a marine biologist, I, I see the definite worth of having these amazing protected areas. So what does this mean for my recreational activities? Well, in MPAs, you can do every kind of recreational activity that you've always done. Mm -hmm. In fact, we, uh, other than in some cases, taking in recreational fishing. But actually, we're really going to see with MPAs that our recreational activity and our experience is really going to be enhanced by MPAs. So we're going to actually start seeing more of the ocean coming to life. and We're going to actually get a better experience from that visit to the ocean. So California is actually in the midst of this groundbreaking implementation of a law that was passed nearly 10 years ago called the Marine Life Protection Act. And that implementation of that law is allowing California to set up new marine protected areas up and down our coast. I believe you brought a really cool video to talk about marine protected areas. I think we'll see that right now. Listen. Something is happening. There's a movement to save our ocean. A wave of change is coming. <laughs> On the surface, all appears healthy. But dive below and the story takes a turn. We've realized our vast ocean has its limits. We're pouring too much in and pulling too much out. You look out on the ocean and it looks fine. You see that blue water, the waves are crashing, it looks beautiful. But underneath the surface, we know there are actually a lot of problems. Overfishing, pollution, habitat damage, 
Over the past few decades, our natural wealth has plummeted, and the list of species in decline is sobering. Our ocean's health is at an all-time low and in urgent need of our help. In California, a bold new effort is racing to help our ocean rebound, an effort that's already having a remarkable impact on ocean health. At its heart lies the creation of a statewide network of safe havens places called marine protected areas. These tightly managed areas strictly limit or entirely ban harvesting. I'm really enthusiastic about the way these marine reserves are going in right now because they give us the hope that uh, we can get things back somewhat like it was uh, 200 years ago before we really started to exploit the oceans wholesale. The idea of marine protected areas is really to take a new approach. Instead of protecting each individual fish species, we're looking at protecting ocean ecosystems, from the beach, to the kelp forest, to the deep offshore canyons. Really creating protection that will work from the shallow to the deep water habitats and protect all of the different species within those areas. Like state and national parks protect our life and our heritage on land, marine protected areas protect our life and heritage in the ocean. One type of area, the no-take marine reserve, affords the greatest amount of protection. Within these reserves, it's easy to see and measure the benefits. There are bigger and older fish and more diverse types of species as well. 70% more diversity and on average 80% larger fish. Fish within reserves are generally much, much bigger than they are outside reserves. They are older, they're more mature, they produce lots more babies. The big Big fat mothers, as uh, sometimes called, are big fat mothers. They produce lots and lots of babies. Now those babies don't stay in the reserve. They go out in lots of other areas. So essentially they're re replenishing areas which have been exploited. And fish aren't the only benefactors. There are more invertebrates, three times more in many cases. Scientists have documented that the bounty inside these reserves spills over to seed new life in surrounding waters. At first glance, this strategy seems straightforward. But with more than 1,300 miles of coastline, how do you choose what to protect? In this fluid environment, where offspring are cast to the currents, the secret to success lies in creating marine protected areas that are big enough and close enough together to act as a network, a network that includes a variety of habitats, from tide pools and rocky reefs to canyon seafloors and open water. California's central coast has dozens of state and federal marine protected areas already in place, and many more are in the making. Each one offers something special, be it Año Nuevo or Point Piedras Blancas, where thousands of two-ton elephant seals gather each year to molt, mate, and give birth. Point Bouchon and Pacific Grove, with their spectacular tide pools that cradle crabs, brilliant anemones, and sea stars. Elkhorn Slough, home to dozens of sea otters, 
harbor seals, and hundreds of bird species. Many like the great blue heron who nests here. Or the iconic Point Lobos, the state's oldest no-take reserve and a favorite haunt for whale watchers. Bordering the deep Monterey Canyon, the tidal waters here feed one of the richest kelp forests on Earth. Eventually, this network will expand to include the entire California coast. And we're joining other nations in creating protected networks across the globe. I hope that uh, my grandchildren and their grandchildren will be able to experience the same uh, diversity of life in kelp forests that I have had in my life. What I've seen uh, is that uh, things have changed both for the worse, and now as we have more and more marine protected areas, things are changing for the better. We know that the ocean used to be very different, that in my grandparents' time it had much bigger fish, more life, and was really a different place. And I think what we're hoping is that the new marine protected areas will help bring some of that back, restore some of the abundance that has been lost, so that my children and their children will really be able to enjoy a healthier ocean. Marine protected areas demonstrate that our ocean has the power to heal itself. Now all we need to do is give it a chance. To find out more, please visit our website. That was truly enlightening. So when we talk about marine protected areas, are these a lot like our national park systems? They are very much like our national park systems. I'm glad you made that analogy because way back when, when we set up the national parks, we really didn't understand maybe as a community of how important those will be from the intrinsic value that they'll offer us. Mm -hmm. We are seeing that now in the few MPAs that we have in our oceans how our communities are really drawing the benefits from those. Mm -hmm. And we hope with this new series of MPAs in California that we will bring new benefits, not just to our economies, but our just way of life from setting aside small fractions of our oceans to really grow and come back to its natural heritage that it once was. So basically, you're saying that we're creating a treasure for our future generations. I like it, yep. That's exactly what I'm saying. Are we going to see those changes in our lifetime? Without a doubt. Uh, as I said, out in the Channel Islands, we're already seeing changes in the biology within those marine protected areas mm -hmm. only after five years. So within 10 years, 20 years, we're going to see exponential benefits and huge changes in the biology mm -hmm. of those areas, um, certainly within our lifetime. In fact, worldwide, there have been MPAs uh, around for up to 40 years. And in those MPAs, you actually have seen complete changes in the system to areas that people had never seen before. So new species are arising. New interactions are arising between those species. It's phenomenal. And it's such an inspiration and hope, considering that we only have 10% of our large fish species left in the ocean. And what we hear in the daily news about climate change and the impact of marine debris on our world's oceans that are so integral to our survival as well as the ocean survival. So do you think that the MPAs will play a major portion in being a bright hope for our future? Yeah, MPAs truly are really a, a beacon of, of promise um, for our understanding of oceans and also for our attempt to conserve those natural resources that come from the sea. So uh, MPAs actually, while we do have other tools of management, this simple idea and concept of setting aside an area and allowing it to essentially grow upon itself is going to be a huge benefit, especially when we're faced with these global challenges 
this idea of allowing our ocean system to have this resiliency against those changes mm -hmm. is going to be extremely important. For those of you who are just joining us, we are here with Michael Sheehy from the Channel Keepers Association in Santa Barbara, and we are talking about marine protected areas. I'm Dr. Andrea Neal from Blue Ocean Sciences. We'll be right back. Sciences, we use an integrated collaborative approach that combines research, media, outreach to get a total overall accurate message to people, government, industry, and to our fellow researchers. For our upcoming expedition across the Atlantic, Blue Ocean Sciences and Ocean Future Society have combined our approach with our web assisted virtual education program called WAVES. Teaming up with Blue Ocean Sciences are fellow ocean advocates at the Ocean Future Society, headed by Jean-Michel Cousteau. The ocean is our life source. Overall, there is an impact. And what we're going to define is how severe that impact is, and what are some of the possible ways that we can deal with that impact. My biggest hope is that we, we succeed with outreach. People need to understand that their trash doesn't go away. It ends up somewhere, and usually ends up in the ocean. And the more that we use these products and the less that we dispose of them properly or recycle or reuse, the more that we're going to be impacting the environment as well as ourselves. Welcome back to the Surf and River Report. I'm Dr. Andrea Neal and I'm here with Michael Sheehy from the Santa Barbara Channel Keeper. We were talking a little bit about what we want for our future generations. And personally, as a marine biologist and a scientist, I am really concerned about our future generations and the legacy we are leaving them. Could you tell us a little bit more about marine protected areas and how they work and function? Yeah, I'd be happy to. So the idea of setting aside a discrete area of our ocean, um, w which goes unexploited, is really a benefit for those um, species and communities within that section. Mm -hmm. But one thing that actually uh, California has really been mindful of is you can either set aside large expanses if you really want to uh, recreate the ecosystem and an ecosystem integrity in that spot, or you can set up this network of smaller MPAs that are actually separated by areas that are open to extractive uses like fishing. However, if you follow the movement of fishes, those small MPAs that are set apart from one another will actually have an exchange between them with the movement of those animals. So what makes the marine protected areas in California different from marine protected areas all over the world? Other MPAs that have been set up in parts of the world were set up with unique um, understanding and reasons, but, but usually very discreet um, uh, implementation. Whereas the ones in California are really set up to reestablish the entire coastal ecosystem. So this idea of um, discrete but separated smaller MPAs are really meant to benefit the areas in between them and maximize that benefit not only in the MPAs but outside them. So the idea isn't just to create these unique parks, if you will, mm -hmm. but also to reestablish the benefits and the natural resources of our entire state. So basically you're saying that by making marine protected areas we're creating more fish. Yes, that, it, that will be one benefit. There will be so many other benefits, but that, that is one of the ones that we're, we're all very focused on. Um, we definitely have seen some changes in our fisheries. Um, we are, are, are certainly looking at some species that um, are in decline, um, are changing in their population structure. And one great hope is that these MPAs and the science is there to back it up um, will actually improve our fisheries and our fishery stocks. We are here with the Surf and River Report and I'm with Michael Shahi from the Channel Keepers in Santa Barbara and we would like to ask you to participate with us in helping us protect our marine protected areas. Is there a way that we can do this? Well one great way you can participate is to get the word out that they exist. 
So educating people that these special areas along our coasts and oceans are there and are there for our enjoyment um, is a perfect way to allow people to go and experience for themselves really the benefits that we'll get from protecting these small sections of our ocean. So where can we visit to find more information about marine protected areas? Well certainly come to our website www.sbck.org. There are also some other great resources out there. The Department of Fish and Game that will uh, be the regulatory agency overseeing MPAs also has a great resource and that's www.dfg dot ca dot gov backslash mlpa. So are there any good examples of MPAs in California waters? Yeah, we have quite a number of MPAs. The ones on the mainland are quite small. They're set up for a variety of different, more um, uh, opportunistic reasons. But we have some excellent MPAs out at the Channel Islands. One of the best ones um, that we have throughout the state is at Anacapa Island, mm -hmm. where dive boats uh, will now go frequently to visit and really see the benefits that we do get from these yeah. protected areas. I know from my own personal experience, when I was out with you guys in 2007, I saw the largest black sea bass I've ever seen. And that type of thing is becoming more and more common within marine protected areas, because mm -hmm. these fish are really given a safe haven to grow and reproduce. The MPA seem like this amazing resource and we're, we're providing future generations with our treasures of the ocean. Is there any opposition to what we're seeing in marine protected areas? There is, yeah. I mean, clearly what we're doing when we set up a marine protected area is we're telling certain users that they can't use that area, right? So fishing can't happen in certain marine protected areas, the reserves. So um, with that in mind, of course, uh, there are users that um, in the short term are, um, have to move where they use, when they do their activity. Mm -hmm. However, over the long term, we've seen time and time again that even those users realize the benefits as those benefits spill out into the areas where they actually get to benefit from it. In fact, the uh, MPAs out of the Channel Islands were set up by fishermen realizing that there was a need to help the fishing and fishing stocks out at the islands. That just seems like an amazing benefit for all of us. So uh, I'm Dr. Andre Neal and we are here with the Surf and River Report and this is Michael Shahi from the Santa Barbara Channel Keepers and I know that both of us would like to ask all of you who are watching us to help protect our marine protected areas. So how can our viewers for the Surf and River Report get in contact with people and learn more about our marine protected areas? Well, they can always contact us at www.sbck.org or me directly at michael at sbck.org. Um, and we'll be happy to share more information about marine protected areas and the process to set them up in California. Thank you. I'm Dr. Andrea Neal from Blue Ocean Sciences. You can reach us at www.blueoceansciences.org. And I want to thank you so much for joining us on the Surf and River Report.